we're off the last bend and we're in the home straight. Three more to come, I Three believe. Three to go, yeah. Yes. Three to go. I was tired yesterday. No, no, well done. No, no, no. Four to go. Four to go. Including today. Uh, do you know what? I had a thought last night. I'd like to run this fast. Steady. You we keep hearing the word <laughs> reimagine, don't we? Yes. Are we missing a trick here? Should we be rescheduling the football season to start in February and end in November with Qatar 2022 one of the reasons but it is something that's been discussed previously I know it has Michel Platini talked about it and then said it, it, if it wasn't for the stupid English playing cricket then we'd probably be able to do it but why not no why well because I don't want it we, well you want football back in July I we're going to be fo- watching football no. two weeks from now well no summer because sport what, what I don't than- want Richard sorry I may be being selfish here right but when I have my holidays I want it to be sunny we, we, we I don't in, want my holidays in the winter. We live in the sunshine. No, no, I don't care. I want more sunshine. What is wrong with... I don't like skiing. Rugby I don't league. like the snow. I'm not interested Nothing. in the winter. Rugby league was on its backside. It was, it was re- reshaped as Super League and it took off. No. And is that fantastic. What better than sitting in, 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 in the pub garden because supporters, with your mates watching football well, in the summer, watching football in, sh- in short half the, sleeves? Half the supporters in, in Britain will be on holiday in July and August. Well, no, they won't. Yes, they will. Sorry, they get their holidays, July and August. Oh, so, so if you People travel outside work. the borders of the UK these days, you can't watch Premier League football? Not if you're living in uh, uh, Anywhere in the world you go, you can watch no, Premier League football. you're not going to travel and watch football. Don't be so silly. Of course you're it's, it's, it's a thought, but it's not a great one. It's not one of your You're best. coming round, you're I'm thinking not, about it more. I'm not, I'm, and the more I think about it, the more I think, no, forget that. I don't want holidays in the It c- would be Christmas. sensational. No, it wouldn't. And we, we finish the season in November in 2022, come straight to Qatar and play the World Cup. It, it, we realign all the other no, competitions around the world. No, I'd rather play the World Cup in Qatar three months into a season where everybody's fresh as a daisy. We might get a fantastic World Cup because we don't have players tired and jaded. Under your plan, they'll have played a long season again, Europe and, the, and England, and they'll be knackered by Christmas again. Arsene Wenger's with us later this week. I'm going to run it past I'll him. I'll run it past him. He might be into that, Four actually. England stars are named in the top five most valuable players in the world behind Kylian Mbappe. Sanko? Uh, yes, uh, I, haven't, I haven't read this, so Sank, young stars, young England stars, yes. Sanko, is Ryan Sterling in yes. that? Oh, uh, all playing in Premier League? Yes, of course. Would, would <laughs> Rashford? Trent, Trent Alexander-Arnold, oh, Alexander. and you're right with Marcus Rashford. And Marcus Rashford, Mo Salah is in there at number six, and Mason Mount, according to this list, valued at £91 million, that is two million more than Lionel Messi. Okay. Sorry, I mean Mason might, might turn out to be an unbelievably good footballer, but one year in the Premier League, or half a year. I think they're in the Premier judging League. that on potential as well. Oh, uh, more news out of Goodison, which mm-hmm. has been the provider of a number of stories yes. as of late. A new shirt sponsorship deal, Andy, worth Saw ten that. million a year with Kazoo, the yeah. car dealing website. And what should be a source of pride to Evertonians is Everton now become the only British-owned brand on the front of a Premier League shirt. Is it? Yeah. It's because we're British owned. Yeah. See, we're trying to promote British industry. That's right. That's what we do. That's right. Yes. Uh, top flight clubs are spying on each other to make sure that they are adhering to <laughs> COVID-19 <laughs> regulations. Uh, Brighton, are, um, and Norwich as well, are, are, are buying up hotel rooms next to Carrow Road yeah, to prevent yeah. fans from going and buying and, 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 and watching. Uh, Raheem Sterling on the same subject, Andy, that Dwight York was talking mm-hmm. about yesterday, asking the very pertinent question. York, he did. Didn't mm-hmm. name the players involved. But no, he did I think we all knew what he, he was talking them. about. He alluded them. We knew who he was talking uh, about. Raheem Sterling asks why Lampard and Gerrard land top jobs whilst Campbell and Cole are forced to start well, at the bottom That's exactly of the what York said yesterday. He said, yeah. my CV is as good as Lampard's yeah, or Stephen Gerrard. And, and he's absolutely right. Um, uh, EFL will vote today on what to do about, well, League Two we know has already ended. League One's looking as though it will. What do we do from that point about uh, playoffs? I think mm-hmm. that Peterborough United, uh, Wickham, sorry, is it Wickham could be propelled on points per no, game? No, Wickham are eighth right now. Yeah, they could go third. And if they get points per game, they will jump up into the third place. And do you know who's going to drop out? Peterborough mm. would then drop out. So. I think there's much discussion I to be made. I think Darren McAntony is going to have some I to think say about that. Plenty to I, say. I do have, I do genuinely have um, uh, 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 thoughts for Tranmere, Mark, Mark and Mickey Palios, mm. because to go down on goal difference is, is harsh. Uh, lost Tony Dunn, sorry to say, uh, European mm. Cup winner mm. for Manchester United, one of the quiet men, but a legend yes. nonetheless. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, Brighton are charging twenty pounds to be a cardboard cutout. 
at the Amex. You can, you, you can, you can buy... Mm -hmm. Stick your cardboard yep. cutter on your seat. Yep. Yeah. Uh, kick it out. This again refers back to something that uh, Yorkie was talking about mm -hmm. yesterday. Kick it out as saying that the Rooney rule is not fit for purpose. Uh, which is exactly what Dwight said yesterday. Which is exactly what Dwight said yesterday. <laughs> um, are you at, now, here's a strange story. Uh, the reason I picked this up is because Luke Edwards, here who's written the story, six weeks ago when the Daily Mirror ran this story, mm -hmm. and I've been talking to you about uh, uh, an alternative bid for Newcastle yes. being in the offer, yes. yeah? Luke Edwards in The Telegraph is now writing a story, US buyer poised to move in for Newcastle if Saudi bid fails. The very same story that The Mirror ran, the very same story that I've been discussing with you, <laughs> But he was all over Twitter when the Mirror ran their original story, poo-pooing it and was saying, it? this is nonsense. Well, I, I wonder what's changed, not. Luke, okay. because now he's saying it's not. Hmm. Yeah. Um, decision delayed on the Merseyside derby. We expect to one today, but it's now been put back to Friday because of health and safety regulations not yet completed. OK. So the police are okay with it, but health well, and safety... Well, we don't know if the police are well, the local entirely police have, okay Well, with the, it. the local police last week had said, yeah. it's up, right now we don't have a problem. At a national level, there's yes. still a debate going on, I think. Are we talking about the R rate? Yeah, I think so, which, which uh, according to Matt Hancock, the, mm. uh, the British uh, Health Secretary yesterday, dipped below one, one. all over the okay. UK. All right? Well, that's good news. Think about it. Reimagine football. Start in February, end in November, play through the summer, Watch it in shirt sleeves. Gorgeous. I can't I think of anything it. better. I can. Okay. Um, let's join our guest today. <laughs> yes. um, right at the top of the agenda, and, and we spent 20 minutes talking with Dwight York mm -hmm. about it yesterday, um, is uh, r r racism. Is, is football inherently racism? If you're black, can, can you get a job as a coach or a manager? Or, a, or, or, a or anything, anything, anything. In, in, in football? Eight years ago, we had a lengthy debate with our next guest, Andy, on the radio. Uh, 18 years ago, 28 years ago, 38 years ago, he was facing the very same mm -hmm. questions. He's become an expert on the subject, mm -hmm. and I, I love listening to him about yeah, it. Too. More positive thoughts and sensible thoughts, I think, than anybody else. And that is John Barnes. Welcome back, John. Good to see you. Hi, John. I've been watching it for the last five minutes, lads. And before we even get on this, Richard, this is the, probably the only time I'll agree with you over Andy. Start in February, finish in November. No. That's Thank what you, we John. have to do. Why, and why I'll tell not? you why. Let me tell you why. Because every World Cup, has been played at the end of a long hard season and the world has been fed so why are we all of a sudden thinking that if we if we if we don't if we play at the end of the season the players are going to be tired every world cup has been played at the end of the season this is new the new world cup in between the season and we don't know how that's going to go but we know how the world cups have gone in the past and they've been fantastic at the end of the season so you realize I'm, all I'm with you 100%. a whole host of international competitions around the rest of the world it's not just about england um it is yeah. a world game and, but it's not, not just about the northern hemisphere yeah. then no, exactly. So I'm anyway, embracing Southern I'm Hemisphere. Yeah, let's get back to the Southern Hemisphere. Subject, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, John. I've been listening for 10 minutes. And before <laughs> I start, what I want to say, I'm only going to tell you about the R rate. At, at the, at what people in Merseyside aren't worried about the R, the R rate. They're worried about the points rate. That's the, that's the, who knows no, they're worried about listen. the points rate. They don't want to give us three points. Never mind Look, the R rate. Listen. Let's cut to the chase here. The subject that we are yes. discussing has been discussed for too long. Right. What is the this, answer? Richard. Richard. The answer is. First of all, we have to look at racism in society. And once we get rid of racism in society, all other institutions will follow. We're trying to do it the other way around. Now, let's specifically talk about football management. And I've been saying this ever since I was a footballer, even before I was a manager. The big question is, can a black man become a good football manager? That's what the question is. Now, that in itself, the question in itself is a racially biased question. And I'll tell you why. Yes, it is. Because that very question presupposes, presupposes that there's a possibility that he cannot be a good manager because he is black. So when you say, can a black man become a good manager? There's a possibility that he can't be a good manager because he's black. So if I was to ask you gentlemen, and when I ask people the question, when they ask me, I say, what do you think? They go, I don't know. Journalists say, can black men be good, ma good managers? And I say, what do you think? They go, well, I don't know. What do you think? So if I was to ask them, can a man fly if he jumps out of a plane? The answer is no, because they know 100% 100% that a man cannot fly. So when they say, I ask them, can a black man become a good manager? And they say, I don't know. They don't know 100% whether he can be. So what they're actually saying is that there is a possibility that he can't be a good man because he's black. And if you think that there's a possibility, no matter how minute, that there's a possibility that he may not be able to be a good manager because he's black, you are racially biased. And unfortunately, we all are racially biased. Racism well, isn't just about pointy hats and, 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 and you know, right-wing neo-Nazis. 
we are all conditioned to think negatively about women, about gays, about different groups of people, about Muslims, because of what we have been wrongly told about them. So when we when we talk about a black manager, and I Tranmere fans may have a go at me, Celtic fans, I never I don't take it personally. It's not personally against me. When I went to Celtic, when I went to Tranmere, they all wanted me to do well. They all supported me. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do well. If you don't do well, that's when the question mark comes. Well, are you cut out to the job in the first place? So what I always say is that rather than black managers or black people like me saying we can be as good as anybody else, what I say is we can, we can be as bad as anybody else, which yes. means how many, if they are bad, white managers lose their jobs, get another job, lose their jobs, get another job, lose their jobs, get another job, or they're giving longer to fail. I'm not saying that if a white manager was at Tranmere that he would have kept his job, he would have lost his job, but he would have lost his job longer than I, mm. than I lost my job. I lost my job quicker than he did. Because what happened at Tranmere, when we were third from bottom, was that the whole season, they, they finished fourth from bottom. Now, with my 11 games, I don't know whether they say that, you know, that, 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 that is, is, is a long time. But with my 11 games, we were third from bottom. The whole season, they then finished fourth from bottom. So you can then say, well, at least the manager kept them up. The whole of the next season, they were fourth from bottom. He kept his job. They got relegated and he kept his job. So I'm not <laughs> saying that, you know, white managers necessarily are, 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 are protected or black managers, are, it's, it's racism against black managers necessarily. But what it is, is that we are given longer. They are given longer to fail. I have to say, John, I'm not looking to make excuses for you, but I think the reason you failed at Celtic is Henrik Larson got injured. Um, the, the, the previous manager bad. in that the one hour. Of course, listen, Celtic was a bit of a blow. Yeah. Celtic. Celtic's different to Tranmere. Tranmere was 11 games. Celtic was different. Now, with Celtic, I don't necessarily think race played a big part in that. I think it had a lot to do. Yes, the perception of, of me, but, you know, we won 11 of the first 13 games. And as Andy would know, then Rangers were fantastic because they were mm. spending lots of money having players on, you know, the Boers and the, and the you know, Van Bronckhurst. And, and they, had, they had great players because they were spending money they didn't have, which is why they're in the problem they had. Whereas Celtic was always a frugal club. So as much as in, up until Christmas, we were four or five points behind them and things were going well, as you say, once Henry Clarsen lost his job and Paul Lambert in the very next game broke his jaw and didn't play for me again, um, I actually won manager of the month in January, interestingly, <laughs> and got sacked on the 4th of February because of the Inverness Cali Thistle. Now, yeah, the difference yeah, is, yeah. once the harmony goes and the togetherness goes and people lose belief in you, maybe from a playing perspective, then it's an untenable position. So did that so happen of course, because you were black? I don't black. think the results were a part of that. And I don't think race was a part of that. I think the Celtic situation is more to do with the fact that, A, I wasn't affiliated with it because there was lots of negativity towards me even when I was there and I remember saying to my ex-wife at the moment at the time um, in the first 13 games we won 11 lost one draw one and I was getting so much criticism by people who really felt I shouldn't have been there that I knew that it wasn't going to last even when we we're doing okay because I said as soon as I go through a sticky patch I'm, I'm going to be gone but that for me is, is different to what we then see in England and what we see generally for, for, for black players I don't think that was personal against me as a black person John, I mean, we, we three spoke about this, what, nine years ago mm. on the radio when you came and did talk sport for us. Why, if it hasn't, why has nothing changed then? Because I get the impression listening to you that nothing has changed in these last 10 years when surely the last 10 years is when things really should have changed hugely. What you have to change is people's perceptions. Wearing T-shirts and holding up placards and saying racism doesn't work or racism is wrong, it's not going to change people's perceptions. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Me, as a, when I was a high-profile footballer, now my, pro, my profile and my platform isn't great, but I try to do what I do. Raheem Sterling, with a huge platform, mm -hmm. whoever you want, Lewis Hamilton, why we can't change a thing? Let's talk about it in football. So, there are two types of people in football. Unfortunately, we make racism a very simple binary choice. You either are racist or you're not. We don't think there's anything in between. Whereas I have a third, a third group in the middle who are, a lot of people are racially biased, but either they don't know or they don't think they are. They're the ones who say, well, you know, I supported John Barnes and, you know, I wanted him to do well and I'm not racist. Like Amy Cooper, the woman who called the, um, the, the police on, yeah, on, yeah. Yeah. on that in America, because yeah. she's a left-wing Trump hater, Obama supporter, who will never think she's racist. But in times of stress and confrontation, this is when your unconscious, subliminal messages that you have been taught for, for years come out. And that's what happens in football. So a football fan can support his black player. A Liverpool fan can support Van Dyke, but he may racially abuse um, Paul Pogba. Man United fans may do that. So what I'm leading to is when Raheem Sterling comes out and says it's wrong to be racist, who is he influencing? 
Who are the racists he's influencing? First of all, if you are racist, and Raheem Sterling says it's wrong to be racist, yeah? If you support Manchester City and you are racist, yeah? Are you yeah. all of a sudden going to be having an epiphany because Raheem Sterling says it's wrong to be not racist anymore because Raheem Sterling holds up a placard and says it's wrong to be racist? I don't think so. What you may do is not be racist to Raheem Sterling. But then, if you're a Man City fan, and I'm not saying Man City as opposed to anybody else, but, but because we're talking about Raheem Sterling, mm -hmm. how are you going to view the black players of the opposition? When you abuse all of the opposition players, anyway, but because Raheem Sterling says it's wrong to be racist, you're not going to abuse a black player for the opposition. So, he isn't going to influence anyone. Now, in that group, he's not going to influence racists. Now, who are the others? 99% of us will say we're not racist. So when Raheem Sterling says, it's wrong to be racist, 99% of people says, Raheem, I agree with you. But because I'm not one of them, it doesn't affect me. Because you're not talking about me, are you? You're talking about Liam Neeson, Peter Beardsley, Derek Chauvin, and those two fans. They're the racists. I'm not. So who is he influencing? Because people aren't going to admit that they're racist. And even if they then say, yes, we agree with you, he is still, as, as a Man City fan, you're still going to look at opposition pl players and still abuse them. So football can do change racism. It has to be done when, first of all, we own up to our own bias and we say, yes, we understand why we are biased. Life has wrongly shown us about black people, about women, about gays, about Muslims, about what, what it has said from Evertonians about Liverpoolians, Liverpoolians about Evertonians, Man City against Man United, Arsenal against Tottenham. This is how we've been con conditioned to think. And it's too simplistic to then say that Lewis Hamilton, Raheem Sterling, John Barnes, Hall of Placards, and we can they say it's wrong to be racist. And this is what we've been trying to do for the last 30, 40 years. Mm. Without explaining to people, A, I understand why they're racist. And I don't, that's why I don't attack individuals who are racist. I attack the system and the environment that makes them think the way they do. And what we have to do is separate racism from racist incidents. George Floyd, John. bananas on the field, lack of black managers. These are racist incidents. That's not racism. Racism is a systemic instit institutionalized concept. And I'm not talking about the police, football. I'm talking about society, whereby mm -hmm. we negatively look at the way we see different groups of people. And that's what we have to challenge. John Barnes has never suffered from racism. John Barnes mm -hmm. has never suffered from racism. What John Barnes has had and what he has experienced are racist incidents. Racist incidents. On a Saturday, yeah. banana on the field, that's a racist incident. When I came off the field, where was I? In the top restaurants in the country, the top bars in the country. When I, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I went down the street, nobody racially abused me. I could go anywhere. Police didn't stop me. Women didn't, people didn't cross the road because they thought I was going to rob them. That is what racism is. And we have to differentiate between what racism is and what racist incidents are. And unfortunately, all we do is challenge racist incidents. And when we don't see them for six weeks, a year, six months, we wait for the next one to happen to then be outraged. But what we're not doing is challenging racism that affects black people in the communities every single day. And that's what we have to challenge and get rid of. John, Martin Samuel today, uh, is this tokenism? Is this an incident? Is this a, th a thoughtful progress? Martin Samuel, having a Barmey presence like Rio Ferdinand in every boardroom should be enshrined in the rules of the game. Would Liverpool have worn those Luis Suarez t-shirts had John Barnes been in on the meeting? Two things. One, would they? Two, is he right? Does it make a difference? It makes no difference whatsoever. Because you still aren't going to change people's perceptions. Is a black man in the boardroom going to stop if you are racist and you're a Liverpool fan and you don't want to racially abuse Paul Pogba? Because John Barnes is in the boardroom. Why would that stop you racially abusing Paul Pogba? Because Virgil van Dijk's on the pitch. But you may still ab abuse um, Paul Pogba. I'm not talking about Liverpool fans. Because we mentioned Liverpool. It could, be, it could be a Man United fan, a Man City fan. All you will do is view them differently. You're not going to change perceptions of anything. And, and black people in boardrooms, because... The whole idea now, we're talking about looking at this in England where we're pulling down statues. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, if you want to pull down statues of people who were either involved in the slave trade, benefited from the slave trade, or supported the slave trade, we're going to have to pull down the majority of statues in Britain, and in, in England and Scotland. <laughs> so, and then who do we decide whose statues to pull down? So for me, that is not the answer. Putting statues down is not the answer. Putting people in, in, in positions isn't the answer. And then we then mention the fact that some people are mentioning when Saddam Hussein's statue was pulled down, or Adolf Hitler's statue was pulled down, we in England and the West chaired and said, yes, that, that's the right thing to do. But we are now um, criticizing when, when um, Colson's statue is pulled down. The difference is that when Adolf Hitler's statue was pulled down, Saddam Hussein's statue was pulled down, there was a regime change which meant that the people in the country were happy that that had happened, so therefore they're changed. We are not changing a regime in England, so pulling down the statues 
isn't necessarily going to make the majority of English people happy. And what it will do, I can tell you, is alienate, alienate a lot of British people, English people, white English people, who may be sympathetic to the cause of black people. But once we then start defacing Winston Churchill, who they may think is a great hero, I don't, we understand, I know what Winston Churchill did, and I understand that. But who, if we then start to tackle all of, of England's past heroes, Samuel Pepys, um, Penny Lane, John Penny from Liverpool, Penny Lane, we're going to deface that because you'll have to attack so many and you're going to alienate and ostracize the majority of white British people who still believe that their heroes are their heroes. So that for me is, is, is not the answer. That for me is not the answer. Tate what? Gallery, sorry Andy, the Tate Gallery uh, uh, takes the name of one half of Tate and Lyle, sugar barons, slave traders. Uh, do we <laughs> rename the Tate Gallery? I don't know. I don't know. John, listen, but, listen, listen. If, if, John, if what we're talking about there, listening to you there, which is, is fascinating, and you're saying that putting uh, black people into the boardroom, putting uh, black coaches in, that in itself is not going to help what you believe is racism. So how do we do it then? Is it something that has to start by educating kids from a young age? Is that what it is? And if it is that, isn't that going to take forever? Well, it won't take forever. It'll take for those kids to grow up because what have we learned? What is the education we've learned? I grew up in Jamaica until I was 13 years old. Mm. What education did I learn in a black country run by black people to a black prime minister? British education because the education system for all the colonies are the same as in England. So in history, what did I learn? That England colonized the world because of altruistic and moral reasons to civilize the savages of the world because this is what we have been taught. Now, when people talk about it's time now for black history to be, to be told in schools, what's more important than black history being taught in schools is the correct white history be taught in schools. Because of course, we believe the empire mm. was there for morally and, 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 and intellectual reasons whereby we you know, take, for example, the, the, great, the great victory we had in the Chinese opium wars, where we forced the Chinese to sell opium when the Chinese wanted to stop because their people were being um, getting hooked up hot on opium. But we forced them to sell opium because that is what we had to trade with, with, with China. And the China refused, so we attacked them, beat them, forced their opium on their people, and that was a great victory for us. <laughs> Look at what happened in Kenya, Malaysia, South Africa, and all of these are seen as great victories for Britain, for morality, for superiority, for civilization against these savages. This is what we have learned. So I can't, how can I blame white English people or white British people for feeling superior when this is what they've been told? If mm -hmm. the truth was told about their history in terms of why they did what they did, because all they wanted to do is furnish the Britain in terms of Look at the wealth of Britain. Where did that come from? That came from the expo exploitation of, of all of its colonies. But that's not the, the story that we've learned. We've learned it was a, a moral, altruistic reason why we are a benevolence that we put on the world. So if we then told the true history, what would then happen is that us in England, not us because I'm British, but I'm not white. White British people would stop thinking we are superior to everybody else because our history shows us that we were morally and intellectually superior to them and Conversely, what we have learned about ourselves as black people, so understand when you talk about learning about black history to show that we also contributed, even something as simple as, as, as world wars. If you look at what happened in the world war, India lost one and a half million people in the world war. Are Indian soldiers ever thought of as our heroes? That's where Lawrence, um, what's his name? I was going to say Lawrence Kenwright, but of course not him, not Lawrence Kenwright. <laughs> Lawrence Fox, on question time, was surprised and said, why have we got to see a Sikh soldier in, in, in the film 1917 when they had over 200,000 Sikh soldiers there, but because we don't know that, we assume that good old white people won the war, good old Britain won the war. So this is the history we have to learn and deconstruct what we've learned to just not so much make black people feel better, but to make white people feel more humble to understand that we aren't different to anybody else. We, have, we, we committed atrocities all over the world like everyone else did. So therefore, we don't feel superior to anyone. John, I, I really don't know what to say uh, mm -hmm. other than thank you. Uh, that was absolutely sensational um uh, you're not going to get an argument here no um brilliant thank you for your time um in changing the subject fairly dramatically i think we can look forward to an appearance on uh, master chef can we from from john Barr? <laughs> yes um a while ago we filmed master chef um i'm doing a photo shoot here now with it uh, we'll have to wait and see how it turns out but please be please, please as you well know that i was magnificent I'm not going to say whether I won or not, but as you know, listen, I am listen. like an Evertonian when it comes to cooking. Regardless of whether we win or lose, we are, we are the best. We win or lose, we are the best. Right, Bob's cut that out. That's terrible. John, I hope to catch up with you again very shortly. Yeah. And thank you. In the meantime, Thanks, keep, please, 
um, delivering the message. Uh, stunning, absolutely stunning. Oh, thanks, John. Thank you for your oh, time. Fine. Thank you. John Barnes. All the best, yeah. lads. Alive from the world. See, this he morning. couldn't resist getting a little bit <laughs> of course there, could he? he couldn't. There's that. And, and yeah. listen, he's allowed. Yeah, They're he about is. to go over the line, yeah. and it may be as good as St. Andy, and, and that, then. Uh, yes, it may be. We'll That's just true. have to swallow that. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, let's, let's see. Hope that Manchester City beat Arsenal <laughs> to start with. That'll be, that'll be so the best goes on. Uh, we will be back here tomorrow in the company of a teddy bear. Uh, oh yes, a, yes, a, yes. A highly decorated. Um, mm. A winner north and south of the border. That's something else, a little bugbear of mine. Why do people say north of the border? If I live in Scotland, I am north of the border. We don't say west of the border when we're referring to Wales, or over the border when we talk about, or over the water when we talk about Northern Ireland. I do. Which is in over Scotland. The water. In, in Scotland. No, north of the border, south of the border. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. Well, no, you've no, just that, said that, it. That make, well, it. No, I said I don't like saying it. It makes it makes it immediately makes you combative, and there's no need for that. In Scotland, in England, Wales. Well, it's Northern only Ireland. combative if you think it's combative. I, I didn't sit here and think, that's very combative, Richard. You shouldn't say that. But you will do. No, I won't, no. no. <laughs> I live north of the border. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, very much looking forward to spending time with a teddy bear tomorrow mm. and uh, uh, hearing one or two stories. And thanks again to John Barnes. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah, terrific um, job. We're back here tomorrow on Being Sports at the same time. Uh, YouTube uh, for our international viewers. And as we always say, although things are calming, thank goodness... Please, the message remains. Stay safe as always. We'll see you tomorrow.